my name is Maximus Iron Thumper. You might know me from such popular videos as how to start a truck the hard way and how to diagnose engine problems in your Land Rover. But today I want to talk to you about fitness. Okay, so you're thinking, but Maximus, fitness videos feature buff young things dancing about being all energetic. And yes, they do. <laughs> and nothing wrong with watching them, we've all done it. And lots of useful information in those videos too, but is it applicable? And what I want to do here is to make a video that is applicable to us mere mortals. I think it's a really important subject that's often made far more inaccessible than it really needs to be. And yet the potential improvements to both physical and mental health are enormous. So what do I know on the subject? Well, a few years ago, despite having been pretty active all my life, I was unfit, overweight, and it was just really getting me down. And I managed to dig myself out of that hole and by going over some of the things that I learned along the way, I'm hoping to try and help some of you do the same. So if you're a normal person who's just a bit fatter and a bit slower than you used to be, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll talk about what I mean by fitness, and I'm gonna go over a few of the things that really stood out to me um, that I think would be useful to pass on to others. And then I'll follow this video up with another much more detailed look at running and how to go about that because that's the path I chose to get fit so that's what I know the most about and then I think I'll probably make a third video on building strength building physical strength because I think that is also something that's really important and underrated and I think that's important for everybody no matter what walk of life that you're in along the way I'm going to explain how I went from a fatty who couldn't really run any distance at all to successfully running the marathon 11 months after starting running. And along the way I lost three stone in weight, which is about 45 pounds or 20 kilograms. <laughs> a fair old amount. So for me personally, the journey to fitness involved running a marathon. There was no need for that. Um, in terms of the health benefits, I could have stopped at getting up to about half that distance and that would have left me as fit as I am now, a few years later. But having got to run 10 miles or so, I thought, why not push myself as much as I could? And I thought this is my last and only chance in my life to run a marathon. And so I pushed on and that's what I did. It was a, <laughs> it was a lot of effort. It was much more effort than it needed to be in order to get the fitness benefits. So I'm not advocating everyone goes out there and starts training for a marathon, uh, unless you want to, you know. Um, one day we'll be able to run marathons again and that will be splendid. I'm only talking about it now to emphasize the fact that if I could go from a fat slob to a lean machine, then well, so could anyone. Now, one important fact first, it, I want to get across that getting fit is really hard work. There's no way around that, it is hard work. But here's the thing, when you are fit, keeping fit, is easy. In, in comparison, it's easy peasy. I'm not as fit now as I was when I was doing all that running. When I was running several times a week, that was my peak fitness. And yet, I went out for a run on Christmas Day, and it was my first run in six months. And I ran just over six miles, which is 10K if you're working in metric. And the point is, when I got back, I felt great. And I felt like I could go and do that again. And that's to me, that's fitness. That I could go out there, whatever it is, you can go out there and do, say, an hour's strenuous activity and feel good at the end of it. And that's a level of fitness I think most people can achieve. And that's certainly a level of fitness that's way in excess of anything that I had even as a youngster. And I've been able to maintain that despite, over the last year, hardly going running at all. Like I say, my Christmas Day run was the first one in six months, and I still had a reasonable level of fitness about me. So if you build it carefully, slowly and carefully, it will last. Being fit is not the same as being healthy, although it's very obviously very closely related. I'm not a healthy person. In fact, I feel ill most of the time. I, I describe myself as chronically unwell, and being getting fit didn't cure that, but it 
it helped. It really does help a lot. Being fit, getting to and maintaining a sensible weight is all about self-care. And I think that's more important now than ever. We all live in a society and the best way we can help that society is to not be a burden on others. And if we are fit and healthy, then we can help those less fortunate that aren't. And bear in mind, at some point, we're all going to be in that category, at least temporarily. All of us need some help sometimes, but the more we can do to avoid being a burden on others, the better. Let's define what we're talking about then. Fitness here equals cardio fitness, and in turn, of course, cardio means cardiovascular, or heart and lungs in English. So here we have time, and here we have fitness. Now the basic principle of getting fitter is overcompensation. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. This is a person's baseline fitness level. Now, when you exercise, that fitness level actually goes down during the exercise. And if you finish the exercise here, it's going to carry on below your baseline and then during the recovery period it will come back up to where it was. So that's, <laughs> that's not been of much benefit, has it? But then if you go out and you do some more exercise and you push a bit harder, that recovery period will lead to overcompensation and you'll recover just there. So your baseline has increased very slightly and then if you do the same amount of stimulus again which might actually be slightly more effort your new baseline will go from there up to there so over time that small little consistent increase will lead to incredible benefits It doesn't have to be running. It can be cycling, swimming or walking. The idea is to get the heart and lungs working hard, but not too hard. Quite a few times in the past I tried taking up running, but looking back I can see that every time I did, I went too hard too soon. And because I'd only recovered back to where I started at best, I'd soon give up. Without this fundamental piece of information, I was never going to get anywhere with it. So that's the first point. You need to push yourself, but not too hard. The second point is consistency. Now, as we've seen, just going out and doing a, a session of exercise isn't that beneficial in itself. But if you keep it up, you'll get that progression. Now, if you go out, say if you go out for a walk once a week, you will progress, you will get fitter, but it'll be very slow. But if you went out twice a week, you'll get fitter probably twice as fast. There is a diminishing return at some point. If you go out running every day of the week, there's going to be no recovery time. And it's the recovery is the bit where you actually get that overcompensation and that adaptation to the stress. So the recovery is crucial and you need recovery sessions as well as exercise sessions, obviously. But what I'm trying to get across here is that it needs to become a regular thing. It needs to become part of your lifestyle. So you've got to make it a regular thing and then just add a bit more to it each session or each week, however fast you want to progress. So maybe if you're going out for a run and you're having to walk up a certain hill, each time you go on that particular run, try and run up a bit more of the hill. And it's amazing that after just a few weeks, you'll be running up the whole hill. And I know this from personal experience. There was one hill in particular, not far from here, that I remember hitting and just grinding to a halt on and then just staggering the rest of the way up the hill, feeling dreadful. And it wasn't that long before I ran up the hill and barely noticed it. You know, the, the, 
the early benefits to taking exercise are really that profound. Everyone has a limit, of course, and but you're not going to get anywhere near those limits for a long time. You're just going to reap lots and lots of benefits. Now for me, having even decided to start running, what I did first was go walking. Um, I was in that bad a shape. I would go out at night time and just walk for hours. And I'd keep that up. I did that for weeks. And I'd keep that up until I could walk for, say, an hour at a time without huffing and puffing while I was doing it. And then I started running. And not only did that give me a really gentle lead into the more arduous exercise, but it also meant I'd lost a load of weight before I even started actually doing any running. <laughs> and you'll find out if you do something like running, the lighter you are, the quicker you go, I mean, obviously. So that progression, that is the process of getting fit. And like I've said before, it's hard work, but it's also fun. And that's my third point, is, is to enjoy it. You need to find something that you can do long term. As I keep saying, it's consistency that gives you the results. And so it needs to be something that you enjoy. I mean, for me, when I started off running, it felt like medicine, quite honestly. It was something I was forcing myself to do in order to get better. But very quickly, because of that rapid progress, as I lost weight, I got fitter, and I learned to run, which is something else I'm going to cover in the, in the next video, I started to actually enjoy it. And that's the reason I went on and did a half marathon and then a full marathon. Not because I had to, or because I'd lost a bet or something, <laughs> because I wanted to. I actually really enjoyed it, and I never thought I'd hear myself saying such things. The fourth and final point I want to make is you're going to have to eat well. And I'm not going to go into much detail on that, not because it's unimportant, it's actually crucial, but because I think we all know what good food is. It's so decent food, lots of veg, as unprocessed as possible. And now this too will probably seem like a chore at first, especially if, like me back then, you'd gotten to a point where you were just eating crap. But once your body adapts to the new regime, you're not going to have a craving for junk food so much anymore. You are going to have a craving for decent food. And the great thing is you can eat loads of it. And you'll need to because you have to fuel the new process. To recap then, we've got four main points I've been trying to get across. Push yourself, but not too much. Keep at it week after week. Make it your lifestyle. Enjoy the progress. Find something that you can do for week after week. Eat well and lots of it. So if all that sounds a bit much, <laughs> and it might, you might want to ask yourself, what is holding you back now? Is it laziness? Is it lack of motivation? Or is there actually something wrong with you? Now, in my case, it was, it was all three of those. Um, I had assumed, I just got to a place where I assumed all my various ailments were catching up with me, and I was getting old, and that was it. And thinking that way just made me more miserable, which made me eat and drink even more, do even less. And you can see how a chat would end up in quite a bad place. Now, before I gave up completely, I went and saw my doctor and it turned out there was quite a bit she could do to alleviate the worst of my symptoms, which was brilliant. And that, that was the thing really, that was the catalyst that kindled my ambition to sort out the rest of it for myself. I then went and saw a physio explained to me that once we checked out my duff knee that I wasn't going to be able to ride a bicycle probably forever I'd have to find something else to do and that's what led me to running so there's always there's always something that you can do and for me it was running and it might seem like running is a fairly straightforward thing to do but it's not. <laughs> There's plenty of mistakes you can make when you take up running. I made all of them and that's what I'm going to cover in the next video. So I hope this video has been of some use, some benefit and what I really hope is that I've managed to inspire a couple of people to to have a look at themselves and to see what they can do. And uh, yes, cheers for now. I'll see you in the next one.